Originally, Laura Nero was born as Laura Negro on October 18, 1947, in the Bronx borough of New York City. Her father was a jazz musician who also made a living tuning pianos while her mother was a bookkeeper. While growing up, the Negro's last name was pronounced Nero in an effort to avoid racially related issues with the community. Laura, along with her brother, Jan, learned how to play music since they were small children. This included attending the High School of Music and Art in Manhattan. After her high school days were behind her, Laura officially changed her surname from Negro to Nero as she opted to further pursue her career in music. This would lead to an audition in 1966 that had Artie Mogul become her first manager as Nero recorded her debut album, More Than a New Discovery. The songs featured on that album would be covered by musical artists such as The Fifth Dimension, Blood, Sweat and Tears, and Barbara Streisand. Those songs were Stony End, Time and Love, and Wedding Bell Blues. There was also And When I Die, a song that was sold to Peter, Paul, and Mary. For Nero, Wedding Bell Blues was released as a single in 1966. The Fifth Dimension turned it into a big hit with their version in 1969. It topped the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, as well as in Canada and New Zealand. In 1967, Laura Nero began a busy schedule as a performer and public figure who appeared on stage and television. One appearance in particular was 1967's Monterey Pop Festival, an event that left a negative impression on Nero and the audience who were there. Right after this, David Geffen stepped in to take over Laura Nero's career as her new agent. Nero was able to successfully sue Mogul and the rest of her old management team as they signed her up while she was still a minor. As soon as the Mogul chapter was behind her, Nero began a new era with Geffen as her new manager. It was he who arranged a recording contract with Clive Davis and Columbia Records. It would be during this time there was a consideration she would replace Al Cooper as the next lead singer for Blood, Sweat and Tears. However, she was dissuaded in her song, and When I Died became a huge hit for the group with David Clayton Thomas performing this song as the band's new vocalist. Although Nero didn't join Blood, Sweat and Tears, her run with Columbia Records allowed her more freedom as a recording artist. In 1968, Eli and the Thirteenth Confession was released as her second album. This earned her critical acclaim, thanks to the rich mixture of jazz music and strong vocals. This was regarded as one of Nero's best works as a performer, as was 1969's New York Tenderberry. Time and Love and Save the Country became her two signature singles. These, along with the two concert performances she did at Carnegie Hall, placed Laura Nero as a key influencer for other performers to follow in her footsteps. 1969 also marked the year the first songs would be reissued as an album. At the same time, Geffen and Nero sold their Tuna Fish music label to CBS for over $4 million. The term of the duo's partnership was to split the proceeds of the sale down the middle. This made Nero a very wealthy woman. In 1970, Nero released her first holiday album, Christmas and the Beads of Sweat. This featured Dwayne Allman and Richard Davis, along with the Muscle Shoals rhythm section. It was the third album of a trilogy belonging to Eli and the 13th Confession and New York Tenderberry. In 1971, it was Gonna Take a Miracle, an album that featured Nero's favorite teenage-style songs. This would be the same year David Geffen established Asylum Records as his own label as a means to secure recording contracts for other artists. At the time, Nero was romantically linked to Jackson Brown, an artist Geffen originally had trouble getting a contract for. There was an attempt for Nero to sign up with Asylum, but it was learned she already signed with Columbia again and did so without notifying him. For Geffen, this felt like an act of portrayal by someone whom he thought was his best friend. In 1971, Nero married a carpenter named David Bianchini. It was also announced she was uncomfortable with the concept of being marketed as a celebrity so she opted to go into retirement from the music industry. She was 24 years old when she decided she had enough. However, the marriage didn't last and it was dissolved in 1976. It would also be in 1976 that she'd make a comeback with Smile before going on a tour that would lead to the 1977 release of her first live album, Season of Lights. This was followed in 1978 with Nested, a recording that took place while she was pregnant with her only child. 
After this, she took a break as a new mother which would lead to 1984's Mother's Spiritual. After this, Nero contributed musical material from 1985's Broken Rainbow, an Academy Award-winning film that focused on the injustices the Navajo people faced when they were forced to relocate. In 1989, Laura, Live at the Bottom Line was the recorded result of a tour she completed in 1988 that was dedicated to the animal rights movement. For years after this, Laura Nero recorded original music from 1993's Walk the Dog and Light the Light. Her ninth studio album became her last and it would spark a new popularity wave for Nero. Between the 1980s and the 1990s, Nero's influence sparked a women's music subculture that continued to grow in size and popularity. In the meantime, she was adamant to avoid television appearances as she was not comfortable with them. Going into 1996, Laura Nero discovered she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. It was the same condition that claimed her mother's life. On April 8, 1997, she lost her battle but was able to survive long enough to witness Stone's Soul Picnic, the best of Laura Nero released as a double-disc compilation recording while she was signed to Columbia Records. She died in Danbury, Connecticut before her ashes were scattered beneath a maple tree on the grounds of the home she owned there. In 2010, Laura Nero was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Two years later, she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. As a musician, Nero's impact influenced a long list of recording artists from a variety of genres such as Roseanne Cash, Elton John, Joni Mitchell, and Steely Dan, just to name a few. The Who's Todd Rundgren admitted after listening to Laura Nero's brand of music he altered his songwriting style to emulate hers. Even today, the influence of Nero's music is still heard as new and seasoned recording artists continue to draw inspiration from her material. Overall, Laura Nero recorded and released nine studio albums. There was a tenth one, Angel in the Dark, that was released posthumously in 2001. She also has seven live albums to her credit and nine compilation albums. Although Laura Nero has made the Bronx proud, she stands as one of the borough's greatest musical artists. By the way, an often repeated myth about Nairo's disastrous performance at the 1967 Monterey Pop Festival, which was perpetuated by the media and the singer herself, was shattered when footage from the event was released on the 2002 concert DVD. The historic concert introduced counterculture icons Janis Joplin and Otis Redding and featured Jimi Hendrix lighting his guitar on fire. Nairo, out of place with her long black dress, Motown-inspired backing singers, and soul-style tunes, was allegedly booed off the stage. In reality, the hippie crowd wasn't overly impressed by Nairo, but offered a smattering of applause and occasional exclamations not of boo, but of beautiful, 